Hope everybody had a fantastic Christmas. Today's video, I'm just going to be going over how I would go about adding um, an additional feature to one of the repositories I uploaded on GitHub as I thought it would be cool just to show my perspective on how I go about these things. And so um, the AI voice cloning repository that I uploaded and made a video on last week, it was brought to my attention that there is Whisper version 3. So um, the, what I'm going to do is um, implement this and update the repository for that um, locally. Um, and if you did want to follow along, you could actually do this on your AI voice cloning repository too. But let's just go about that. So. Here I've got the uh, the AI voice cloning repository. I normally always just open it up in VS Code as VS Code is the uh, my choice of IDE. So normally what I would do is just run the repository. Just in general, when I'm trying to figure out things, I will just run the repository and get a feel for how things run. So in this case, um, I'm just going to launch the web interface and um and since i know it's a web interface i'm going to look for unique characters that i can figure out where i would update whisper because as of right now i wouldn't know in this entire repository um all the code where to look for whisper because i have um this isn't my repository so all right so here we have it opened and for whisper i know this is going to be part of the training and so here i've got the whisper area um and so what I would be looking for here are some keywords, um, which are whisper model and whisper backends. And so VS Code has a neat feature that allows you to look up things inside of the repository. And so I would look for those keywords because I know they're an HTML element um, that I would be able to find. So in this case, I could search up whisper model and here I found the drop down menu for Gradio here. And so now that I know that there is a drop down menu, I can see what's attached to it. And so it looks like we're using these settings here and we've got them established. Um, I believe these would be global um, somewhere in here as well. So what I can do is uh, same thing as well as I can just copy this and go into VS Code here. And then find that this is not inside of the web UI. Um, can't find a good spot to put myself. That this is actually in the, take a look over here. It's in utils instead of the web UI. So um, we're gonna go into the web UI here and I can find that there is a parameter here that defines all of these. And so um, to my knowledge, this one is pretty uh, simple to just now add V3. And this should enable me to um, try out and see if it works with uh, Whisper X that I have installed. Okay, so I can go ahead and stop running that because I need to rerun the um, main file. And this is assuming some coding knowledge and some knowledge and understanding on how all of this is working and is connected. So sorry if this uh, is very abstract and this is just a perspective on how I go about some of these updates. Um, now it wasn't like this in the beginning because there are so many different things that I don't know about this repository that I would need to, um, brush up on and learn a little bit more about. All right. So now we're back inside of the interface here, so I can go over to training and see if I've got large V3 and I do. Cool. Um, now these whisper backends I already had, so let's just go ahead and select these two. Um, and then. I want to try it out on a data source. So let me go back into here, see if I actually have some um, files for training. I do have Mel, so got some of these files. It's going to create a new delete me and paste those in here and see if we can go about getting it downloaded. So um, moment of truth, transcribe process, no module named WhisperX. So, Oh, it looks like I did not install WhisperX on this platform, so that is okay. I'm just going to go ahead and install WhisperX from the um, repository and let's see, pip install WhisperX. And I know this is actually from previous experience. This is going to break a couple of things um, because of uh, some dependencies. And so what I actually will have to do is 
um, I could rerun all of the previous requirements um, pip installs or I could see which dependencies are going to be broken. So let's just wait for this to finish up. And if there are specific parts of this process that you want me to break down a little bit further, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to make videos on those as well. Um, you just have to give me the ideas on what I need to shore up or explain more about. Um, and you know, I'd be happy to do that. So leave a comment down below if you want me to clarify on some of the things that I am doing uh, to do this editing process. beforehand and see what version of tokenizer I have. So what I can do is right click in here and then I can activate the virtual environment in this other repository. It's the same repository but I've just got two copies on my computer. This is one that works. And then what I can do is do pip show tokenizer and this will show me what version of tokenizer I have here. So this is the one that works for the AI voice repository. beforehand without that foresight uh, or you wouldn't have that foresight if you had encountered it beforehand and so that just comes with doing this uh, process relatively a lot and just figuring things out along the way all right so here i am i've got this whisper x and then i've got large v3 so now what i can do is do transcribe and process and this is going to show processing but if i go back into the window here um, it should now start downloading so cool it looks like it is doing um the appropriate download which would be whisper v3 and that is pretty cool so um to add this feature isn't much of a complex um thing you just have to figure out where you need to add certain uh, parameters and certain variables and so for the ai voice cloning i could actually find this um actually this one's inside of my github uploads ai voice cloning models um, I could find this one inside of hugging face hub and then this uh, one right here is going to be where it's uh, downloading it to so this is whisper large v3 and once it's done downloading it should work just like all of the other previous uh, whisper models and that's going to be pretty much it for this one and yeah I just wanted to show a little bit of insight on how I do things for adding or enhancing uh, repositories now this is a pretty simplified example um, and I already kind of knew what I was going to do but the things that I kind of outlined and went through are definitely aspects that I incorporate for when I want to do enhancements I also recently did an enhancement on a extension from Silly Tavern for XTTS. So if you want me to make a video on how I went about modifying that extension, just to give some insight on um, that as well, I can do a video for that too. There's like a billion different ways on how each person goes about doing it. Um, but you know, if you do want to see the way that I go about doing it, uh, leave a comment down below and uh, say you're interested in that type of stuff. So 
that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, once again, I hope everybody had a fantastic Christmas and a new year as well. It's coming up pretty soon. And um, like the video, please like, subscribe, all of that. And if you're a member of the channel, thank you so much for your support. I always appreciate it and wish the best to all of you in the next year. So see ya later.